In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make a six pieces dress with um, semi peplum to the front and to the side. So, this is the fabric we are going to be using. This is some um, taffeta and um, it's blue taffeta and we are going to be needing polycotton. We are also going to be using this beautiful lace it's 3d 3d lace we are going to be using we are going to be needing our measurement tape we are going to be needing our ruler our scissors fabric scissors our measurement which is in the book a chalk that's what we are going to be needing for the cutting so the measurement required for this um style this dress i've drawn a rough picture of the style so i'm going to start by cutting the taffeta first okay guys sorry i was trying to see if i can get the camera to focus so i've sketched the style out this is a rough picture of this style that I'm making I hope you guys can see it properly now it was quite difficult to see it a bit so I thought I would show it again okay so the measurement will be needed you need your bust measurement your waist shoulder your ham hole measurement you need your hip measurement you need your half length which is shoulder to waist measurement you need your shoulder to bust point measurement, shoulder to under bust. And then you need your upper bust, under bust measurement, waist to knee measurement. You need um, the length of the dress, net of sleeve. Um, you need your upper bust measurement, your ribs measurement if it's a long sleeve you are making. Sleeve measurement, if I haven't mentioned sleeve measurement already. Your waist measurement, I think I've measured that already. Okay, guys. So those are the measurements that you will need if you want to make this particular style of dress that I am going to be making. Okay, everyone. So in order for you to know how much fabric you will be needing, you will need to times your hip by 2.5 five if you have enough fabric if you don't have enough fabric just times your hip by two so that will give you the amount of fabric you will be needing for because when you times it by two that depends on the amount of flare you want because it's a six pieces dress so it depends on the amount of flare you want and if you have enough fabric if you don't have enough fabric i just times it by two and I work with whatever is there. So I times the person hip by two and it give me 96. So I will cut 96 of this taffeta. And then after I cut this taffeta, I'm going to fold this taffeta into two parts. When I fold it into two parts, one part will be two inches longer than the other side. The one that is two inches longer, it's for the back panels so I'm just going to be folding it into two and then I've made one to be two inches more that would be for the back so I just fold it into two so I fold it into two and then I'm going to cut it in half remember one of this is two inches more one of this is two inches more the one that is two inches more is for the back so i'm just going to cut it i'm going to try not to make this video too long so
Okay, so this is for the back. And that's for the front. So what I do is I fold this into three equal parts. I fold it into three equal parts. Okay, everyone, as you can see, I have folded this into three equal parts. That's one, and this is folded into two. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to cut it on this side and take the top one out so I can work with this top one. I'll cut it, and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. Okay, guys, before I actually cut it, um, before I actually cut it, I'm going to take the measurement, the length first, before I divide them, separate the top one from the bottom. I'm going to mark the length of the, I'm going to mark the length of the, of the dress down first. So the length of the dress is 61. 61 minus your half length. Your half length is shoulder to waist. So 61 minus your half length, which is your shoulder to waist. In this case, it's 17. So I'm going to remove 17 from 61. That's 44. So plus half an inch on top to sew it to the top section. And then half an inch at the bottom to hem it so that will be 45 that will be 45 you don't need a lot of um, hemming you don't need a lot of allowance to hem the bottom part because this is for the lining for the lace and this is also going to be in the front of the dress so we don't need a lot of hemming because the bottom part of this dress is going to have a bit of the lace here on this fabric. The rest is going to be the lining to line the lace. So we only just need half an inch to maybe an inch, um, half an inch to maybe an inch um, length um, allowance to hem it. So I'm just going to use 45. And I'll mark it down, 45, I'll mark it 45 down. You can take your ruler and draw a straight line. And then you cut it out. Okay, so now I've cut it out. I'm now going to cut out the top section, which I'm going to be using first. So I'm going to be kneading the top one first. The top section will be the middle of the dress. Cut it with care because sometimes the fabric tends to rip incorrectly if you don't cut it properly. Okay, so I've divided it. I don't need to divide the bottom one because it's two here. There's two pieces there. I don't need to divide it. I'm just going to cut that one in one go. That's going to be the side. The side of this dress, of the skirt, the bottom part of the dress. This here is the middle. So what I'm going to do, let me take this one out first. I'm going to fold this into two. So 
I folded this into two I'm just going to take my iron and just press it to get a neat press line to work with so this video might be in two parts I might show you how I saw it it might be in two parts so this is I'm hoping it may not but it might be in two parts because it's a full six pieces dress I am making okay so I folded it into two I'm just going to show you what's next because it's a six piece dress you are going to have to divide in the bottom part of this dress we are going to be using the hip measurement only the hip measurement is what we are going to be using so you are going to be dividing the hip by six so the hip divided by six So in this case, it's giving me eight. So now I have folded this fabric into two. I have folded the fabric into two. So I'm going to divide that eight into two, which is four. I'm going to bring the camera down a bit so you can see what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so I'm going to divide that eight into two, which is going to give me four. So I'm going to mark down four on top here. This is the waist section, but we are not using the waist measurement. We are using the hip measurement on the down part of the skirt. So I'm just going to mark down four. So from this point, I'm going to mark the shoulder to the knee point. To get the shoulder to the knee point, you need to measure the person. Although on average, it's, no, it's normally 19, between 19 and 18 on average. So I'm going to put the measurement from the waist to the knee. Which is 19. Plus half an inches. So so that by the time you finish sewing it it will be exact 19 by the time you take the half an inch is there and half an inch is there it will be 19 so i'm going to mark 20 rather than marking 19. so i'll mark 20. so from this top i'm going to mark four inches all the way to meet the 19. so four inches all the way I started from the 19 where I started from the waist I came down to the 19 so whichever you can mark from the 19 up from the waist down to the 19 or to the 20 rather it's 20 I marked there once it's once I saw it on top it's going to be 19 by the time I take half an inch half an inch off the top half an inch off the bottom it's going to be 19 so I'm just marking the four inches I, I got this four inches is the hip measurement divided by six. We give you eight. Divide eight into two, that's four. Okay, so take your ruler and just draw a straight line. Okay, so from this 20 mark here I'm just going to draw another straight line going that way just as it's just a guideline just a guideline so I know we are the 20 stop okay so from here we can add half an inch sewing allowance or you can add one inch sewing allowance I'm just going to add one inch sewing allowance. I just draw a straight line.
Okay, I hope you can see what I have done. I don't know if the shock is clear enough. So from this knee point here, I'm going to come in by one inch. From the knee point here, I'm going to come in by one inch. This is already one inch here. So from here, what I do, I just connect it to the hip line. Okay, so now I haven't marked the hip line down. So that would be from waist to the hip. Waist to hip, on standard, most people is nine. So waist to hip, nine. So this is the hip line. So on the knee area here, I've come, I've come in one inch. Remember I had that one inch allowance here. So instead of putting one inch on the knee, I've taken that one inch away. So I'll just connect from this point to the hip there. This is just so you get your curve. So that I say, I just freehand it. I freehand it and I connect it. So from this point, all you need to do is just to draw a straight line. From this point here, you just draw a straight line up to that point. And that is your flare. You just need a strong, a straight ruler. I hope you can see what I'm doing, guys. So I'm just drawing a straight line from this point here all the way down. That's your flare. If your fabric is not wide enough at the bottom, you can reduce the amount of flare a bit. Okay, so let's quickly go over this again. So what I did is, after I fold my fabric into three equal parts, I took, I cut one of the one of them off, and I'm using that one as the middle piece of the dress, the bottom part of the dress. So I cut it out, folded it into two, as you can see, it's folded into two, and then I divide your hip, your hip divided by six, is eight. Where the person I'm making the dress for is eight. Divided into two again because the fabric is folded into two. It's four. Plus one inch sewing allowance is five. So I've marked the one inch sewing allowance to the knee. You have to take the knee measurement, the waist to the knee. You have to take the waist to the knee measurement. Although on average it's nine plus sewing allowance. So I made it 20. Because by the time I finish sewing it, it will be 19. So what I did is I mark it down and then I also mark the waist to hip. You need the waist to hip on average is nine, but it's good to, me to, to measure it. So I mark it down here, waist to hip. So I take away the one inches which I initially had it as seam allowance on the knee. I take it away because I need the curve. I need the curve. So I've taken that one inches away and then I freehand it from that point to meet the hip. I just freehand it as you can see the chalk going that way just to meet the one inch seam allowance down here so there is no allowance on this point here on the knee point reason is because i want this knee point to have a nice shape fitting shape so from there i just drew a straight line across as you can see i just drew a straight line across so I'm going to cut it out. As I say, if your fabric is not enough at the bottom here, just reduce the amount of flare that you have there. Just reduce the amount of flare that you have so the, the flare will be straight and nice. So all I need to do is cut it out. I'm just cutting it out. So, okay, so you can see that I've cut it out. And this is the top part. Here is the bottom. So you can open it so you can see how wide 
the flare is so this is the flare if you have enough fabric if you have a lot of fabric you can make the flare more if you have enough fabric you can make the flare more but if you don't have enough fabric you just work with the fabric that you have so this is the middle piece this is going to be the middle piece so now what I'm going to do now I'm going to take this and cut the side piece the middle back piece so that's what I'm going to do I'll quickly just bring the other fabric so this fabric is folded into two and I'm going to be using this fabric for the side So you can make the side piece, the flare a bit more if you have enough fabric. So what I'm going to do in this case, I can choose to fold it again, but I'm not going to fold it again. I can fold it again and do the same like what I did in the front. But I'm not going to fold it again. I'm just going to take the middle piece. I'm going to open it out. As I said in my other video, there are different ways of cutting flare. There's different way of cutting six pieces skirts. This is just one of the easiest methods I use. There are other methods that you can use. So instead of folding it, I just open, I open it out. The middle piece which I've cut already, I just open it out. You can iron it because you know you got the crest in the middle. So I'm going to quickly iron it so it can straighten out. So I can get the accurate measurement out. Make sure you always iron your fabric if your fabric is rumpled, if it's squeezed, iron it out. Okay, so, so all I did is just placing, I just placed the middle piece on top of the side piece the two side piece there's two fabric at the bottom of this middle piece so as you can see i have more fabric on the side for the side piece so i will cut the flare that way and i'll cut the flare this way so just watch what i do on this side of the flare on this side of the flare just before I cut it to the end I'm going to put one and a half inches here so this will be the outer side this side that I'm cutting accurately the same is going to be the inside so if I stand back a bit this side here will be here of the skirt this side here will be the hip side of the skirt this when i call it skirt i mean the bottom part of the dress because the dress is in two pieces the um, bodice and the skirt so i'm working with the skirt so i'll cut it out now so i've extended the flare because i got enough fabric here to extend the flare at the side Okay, so as I said before, I'm going to be adding one and a half inches to this side because this is the hip side. So I'm going to be adding, all you need to do is take a measurement tape and just mark one and a half inches. One and a half inches from the waist section all the way to the knee point. All the way to the knee point here and then I'm going to show you what is next let me just use the ruler to draw a straight line and then I'll show you what is next ok 
Okay, so from here, let me quickly just draw a straight line across as well. I hope you can see what I'm showing you here, guys. Okay, so from here, I'm going to come in by one inches because I want a nice curve here. So I'm going to just come in by one inch. Can you see what I'm doing there? I'm coming in by one inches okay so this is the one inch I just need to ma measure again shoulder to to the hip which is nine so I just quickly measure shoulder to the hip length um, it's not shoulder to hip length sorry it's your waist to your hip waist to hip waist to hip So I measure waist to hip, which is nine. So from here, you just freehand it again, just a little, just freehand it to meet the seam allowance I've put there. Okay. So from this point, from this point here, you just draw a straight line. When I mean a straight line, I don't mean straight line where you have to draw like a flare shape, like a, a triangle shape. That's what I meant by straight line. Don't draw a straight line. No, you're not going to have a, a triangle shape. So you need like a triangle shape rather than a straight line. So maybe I should use the word triangle shape, which is for the... Okay, uh, so I've cut it out. As you can see, this side is more than this side so this side is the hip section as I described to you earlier on and this is the inside section in order for you to differentiate between the two you notch here so I'm just going to notch it but before I notch it rather I'm going to use this the middle piece and this two side piece to cut the back out so once I cut the back out and then I can notch them. So I'm going to show you how I cut my back six piece. Because if you have enough fabric, as I say, I like to put a flare at the back as well. So I'm going to be showing you how I do that. Okay, everyone. So as I said before, if you have enough fabric, you can cut your middle back the way I want to show you now. That is if you have enough fabric. If you don't have enough fabric, you can watch my other video of how to cut a six pieces skirt. This particular one I'm cutting is going to be having the flare going that way, the flare going this way. So this part here is the zip section. I'm going to be measuring um, two inches for zip allowance. So on the knee point here, I'm going to be putting a flare because I want the back to have enough flare. You can only do this if you have enough fabric. If you don't have enough fabric, please just cut the normal one that you put just two inches or uh, one and a half inches here and cut it all the way straight down. And then you put your flare on this side. So this is the middle piece, as you can see, I've put it on top. As you can see, the middle piece on this side is straight. If I was to cut the normal one, I would just add my two inches allowance for zip on this side. And I would just cut it straight. And then on this side, I'll just follow the, the flesh shape here to the end. But in this case, because I have enough fabric, I'm going to, from here, from the knee point here, from the knee point here, which I've already put down with um, chalk measurement, uh, chalk, I'm going to draw a flare out from this point here. So before I do that, I will just measure in I measure in one inches outward. I measure one inches outward. So I measure one inches outward. So from this one inches point, I'm going to draw a flare all the way down. You can use this method as well to cut a tear. If you want to cut a tear in the back of a skirt or a back of the dress, you can use this method to cut a tear. The only difference is 
the back here where my hand is if you can see it will be longer than the front one the back will be longer than the front if you are cutting it i'm not cutting it i'm just adding more flare to the back where the zip is so you just take your ruler and draw a flare to the end just make sure the flare is straight properly it's not curved make sure it's a straight flare okay so on this point now i will mark my two inches for zip allowance i'll mark these two inches all the way down to meet the one inch here i'll take a ruler and draw a straight line so here you know here is two inches I only need one inches. I only need one inch. So, you know, I've already come in, I've already taken, I've marked down one here already. So, from this one, I just draw a line to connect to the zip allowance, free handed, from this one inch here, this chalk here, this chalk here. I just use free handed. You can use your ruler if you want, but I free handed just to meet the zip. To meet the zip allowance just like so i don't know if you saw what i drew there just like so so on this side i just cut it out i'll put a bit of flare here because this is the back i'll put just a bit of flare here i'm not going to be using the lace for the back the middle front and the middle back i'm not putting the lace the lace is not enough for that so that's why we have enough fabric to use plain fabric safeta to use so I'm going to be lining the taffeta with polycotton to give it body. At the moment, it's very light. So when I finish cutting this, I'll cut the polycotton to use to turn it, to face it, to give it more body. So from this knee point again as well, on this flare side, I'm going to add a bit of flare to it. So I'll just come out by just, um, just like, less than half an inch uh, let me just come up by half an inch so from there i just drew another flare so it makes the back to have more flare than the front but it's also okay because it will give the overall dress at the bottom more flare this is only at the middle back i'm doing this middle back only I didn't do it to the front, just the back only. So I'm just going to connect these two together like this. Okay. So now, all you need to do is just to cut it out. Once you finish cutting it out, you can then cut the side back using the side front to cut the side back so i'll cut this out when i finish cutting this out i'll cut the side back out i'll use the front side to cut the side um, back and then i'll show you how i cut the top section okay everyone so i'm going to now start cutting the top section of the dress i'm just moving the camera a bit so you can see properly I'm going to be cutting the top section of the dress. So I folded my fabric into two. So I got the back. That's the back I'm tapping on. This is the front. So I'm going to be showing you how I cut the top section. The top section of the dress is very straightforward. It's the basic uh, pattern block. It's the same thing. So what I do first is, because it's a round neck, it's not a princess dart or anything, or a sweetheart neckline. It's just a normal dart, normal waist dart I'm going to be putting. So what I do first is, I draw a one inches guideline across. So that is the first thing I do first, one inches guideline across.
I don't know if you can see what I'm drawing. This chalk is not very strong. One inch guideline. Okay, so I draw a one inch guideline across. So now we are going to be putting down all our measurements. So the shoulder divided into two, shoulder length into two. So whatever your shoulder length is into two, you mark it down. That's the half of your shoulder. You mark it down here on the guideline there. I hope you guys can see. Let me move the camera a bit backward again. Okay. So this is half of the shoulder. In order for you to get an accurate length of the ham hole length, you can measure the person. Or sometimes I use the bust measurement divided by four. Or if you have the measurement of the chest of the person, the chest across, you can use it. But on average, for someone of a bust 42, I used nine. So on average, you could probably use nine. Perhaps if you measure the person, it will probably be eight. But nine is okay because you need sewing allowance. And you also need a bit of a wearing allowance as well so i'm going to be marking down nine so this is the nine so from here i'll connect this nine to the half of the shoulder there with a straight line so from there i just draw a straight line across or to the other side okay okay so we are going to take the length of the half length your half length is your shoulder to your waist that's your half length so from this guideline i'm going to be measuring shoulder to waist so shoulder to waist is 17 plus half an inch sewing allowance at the shoulder point plus half an inch sewing allowance at the bottom to join the skirt. So I'm going to be cutting 18. So this is 18. Well, before the 18, uh, okay, yeah, 18, I'll leave it at 18. 18 is all right. Just measure it from the top on this side as well, just to make sure you get it in correctly. You just draw a straight line with a shock. Okay, so that's uh, 18. So now we are going to take the shoulder to bust point. So make sure in this particular measurement, you need to measure the person. You need to remember that you've measured the person. If not, you won't get the accurate bust point. So it's good to measure the person on this particular occasion. So shoulder to bust point. So that's where the bust starts. In most cases, I think it's about four inches from underneath your armpit to where your bra stop. You can see where I'm putting my hand here. You can measure it. In most cases, it's four inches from the ham hole here down. But if you measure from shoulder to bust point, it's better. At least you know where it stop, where the bust point starts. So the bust point is 12, and I've marked 12. I'm just going to take a ruler and just draw a straight line across that way. Okay, so now I'm going to be putting down the person's bust measurement and waist measurement. So the bust divided by four. And then you mark it down. I'm going to be marking it down. Don't forget the back. You need to put your two inches 
The zip allowance, or one and a half inches zip allowance. See, that's what you put there. So that's the bust measurement there. And then you are going to also do the same with the waist. The waist divided by four. And then you mark it down as well. Okay, so now I've marked it down. So now I'm going to put two inches allowance on the bust section. I'm going to be putting I'm going to be putting three inches allowance on the waist section. Reason is because I'm going to be putting a dart. I'm going to be putting a dart, a waist dart. I know the waist dart is half an inches on both sides. And then I have the remaining two inches allowance for just wearing allowance. So I'm just going to connect all the lines together. I freehand it like so. Don't know if you can see it. I just freehand it from the top here down there. So the neck, the neck is going to be. I'm going to be using three and a half inches wideness. You can use four. I think four will still be all right as well. But I'm going to be using three and a half inches for the dropness of the neck for the back I'm going to be using one and a half inch for the back for the front I'm going to be using six and a half because I want seven that's for the front so I'm going to be using six and a half because I want seven so I max six and a half by the time I finish sewing it it will be seven so what i'm going to do i'm going to actually use four for the wideness i think four will look more better will fit more better so i'm going to be using four for the wideness so i'm just going to take my curve ruler this way and i'm going to draw the neck i'm just going to mark them out with the chalk first always remember you need to cut the back neck out first you need to cut the back one out first if you cut the front one out first you will mistakenly cut the back so always cut the back one out first if you have a curve ruler it's always good you can mark your neck and the curve will come out nicely always use cut the back one first cut the back one first okay so on the ham hole here we need to come down by one inches for the shoulder slope you connect your one inches to your neckline here okay so now we got only eight left so eight you to get the middle point of the arm hole 8 divided by 2 is 4. So that is the midpoint. All you need to do is take your curve ruler. And just draw the curve. To meet the midpoint. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do guys. And then you cut it out simple as that as i say cut the back neck first so you don't mistakenly cut into the front i mean you don't cut the front and then end up is cutting the back at the same time so the back one first Okay, when you finish cutting the cutting it, take it out. That's the back. Put it aside, come to the front and cut the neck of the front. So 
ça. Taste. So guys, that's the top section of the dress. So what I will do now is, because the video is getting too long now. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to take this and cut the main fabric and cut the poly cotton. And then after that, I'm going to sew it and show you the finished outfit of the dress. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a video of how I sew it. If I can, that will be in the next part of this video because the video is already too long. If I do, that will be the part two. If I did make a video of how to sew it, it will be the part two. I will try, but if not, this is where I'm going to end this video. The next thing I'm going to do is just to cut the sleeve. I got a, a tutorial a, already of how to cut a sleeve. So I don't need to show you how to cut that. If you watch the tutorial of how to cut a sleeve, you should be able to use that to cut the sleeve. It's just a normal plain sleeve. There's nothing to it, no fanciness to it. So it's just a normal plain sleeve I'm going to cut. I'm going to use the fabric to cut that. And after that, I will sew the dress. When I finish sewing it, I'll show you how it looks like. As I say, if I'm able to make a part two of this video, showing you how to sew it, I will. If not, I'll post just this and the finished dress. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. If this video was helpful, please give it thumbs up, comment, like, and subscribe. And also, you can also leave me a comment on any video you want to see, anything you think you want to learn to do that you don't know how to cut also you can leave me a comment and i'll try and make a video of how to do it if it's hard to cut a pencil skirt a peplum whichever whatever it is leave me a comment and i'll get back to you i'll try and make a video of it thanks guys for watching thanks for always coming back to watch my video thanks for your support i'll see you in my next video hopefully if i saw it that will be the next video if not it will be something else thanks guys bye